Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, last week, save my tire because I'm recording this about five seconds later. Um, last week I talked about losing Jaden, what the experience was, how it happened, what happened, and I'm gonna talk to you guys now about my experience after losing him and my emotional roller coaster. And please watch because I can guarantee there are others that went through something similar. Um, Jaden was my first baby, so I, I didn't have any other children at the time. He was my first baby, my first loss, and, um, yeah, so I'm just gonna jump into it, carry on from last week's video. So we lost Jaden and I went home. And I couldn't sleep for days. I mean, it sleeping hurt. I couldn't watch TV because there were babies on TV. I couldn't listen to music because it just made me hurt. I forgot to mention it, so I really want to mention it now. One of the things that really hurt afterwards, too, was getting dressed. It really hurt that my clothes fit me again. Things that didn't fit before, like as I was pregnant, my belly grew. They, they were fitting, and that was really heartbreaking. And along with that, it was also hard that my milk had came in because he was a baby. You you know, you still go through everything that had happened. So my milk was there throughout the day. My I was leaking milk. I, the constant reminder. Sound made me hurt. I couldn't leave my house because it hurt. You'd see babies everywhere. It's kind of like when you find out that some, like when you're trying to have a baby, all of a sudden you notice everybody else is getting pregnant. Um, it's like that, except for I lost my baby and everybody else had theirs or was pregnant. And it was really hard because I had a lot of friends that were pregnant at the same time. Um, and so, you know, to this day, I still see their posts about their kids and their, at their age. And every time I look at them, all I can think is, wow, Jaden would have been this big. He would have been that age. Um, but anyways, so back to I went home and I couldn't sleep for days. Everything haunted me. Everything hurt. I physically hurt. My heart hurt. My face hurt. I wanted to pause and say something right here because I completely didn't mention it, mostly because I kind of avoid thinking this way now, or try to, but it was a big part, and it still is at 2 a.m., is the guilt of... It was my body. It was my baby, and I... You can't help but subconsciously blame yourself that... You're, it's your reason that you died. Not true. I'm going to tell you guys that. Pause and insert here. Um, it is never, like, unless you're smoking, drinking alcohol and being crazy doing drugs and stuff, it is most likely not ever your fault that your baby died. Um, but the guilt really is heavy. Like, you cannot help but blame yourself as for an outsider to know. Like, it's all that you can do is blame yourself. I felt like a failure of a woman because that is a woman's job. Like, I mean, my body was made to have babies, like, in evolutionary sense. It's, so I constantly was feeling like a failure at that aspect. Being a mom was everything I ever wanted in life. You can ask all my friends growing up, being a mom was the only thing I ever talked about, the only thing I knew for certain, and all of this spiraled into this. And Skylar, bless his heart, um, I just don't know that he understood in the way that I did. I think he does a lot more now that we have other kids, but it's kind of like when you're pregnant, you feel them. I mean, you, you get a really big connection to your baby, no matter how long, far along you are. But, you know, the longer you're with your child, the more you grow a relationship with them. And so I had spent 29 weeks growing this relationship with Jaden, preparing for him, loving him, you know, he was already a baby. And it just was really hard. And, you know, Skylar, he he lost his son, but I, I don't know that he, he'd never seen him alive. He'd never really experienced him in the way that I had. And so it was a lot harder like harder for us to see eye to eye on our ways of grieving and everybody grieves differently so I mean there's no way I blame him for that at all and more or less honestly the way that he grieved probably helped me in the long run um but 
we were clashing a lot because of that. He kept just wanting me to feel better. He kept wanting me to feel better and I just didn't, didn't feel better. Um, about a week later, I finally put makeup on and I, oh, and I was forced to school. I was in college at this time, you guys, and it was about three weeks before the end of the semester. And so, um, I had to go back to school. I had to take tests. If I didn't go to school and take those tests, I would have failed my classes and I would have freaking, that would have blown too. So I had to go to school in tears, crying. I failed my tests, but my teachers were nice and they understood and still passed me. <laughs> um, but those two things, like Skylar kind of pushing me to be a human still and going to school probably helped me from being so much of a shut-in. But I'm gonna tell you what really the parts, I guess not everybody, probably nobody really knows. Um, I don't know what day it was. I remember that I couldn't sleep, so my family had all gone home because everybody came to see me to say sorry. Um, but my family had all gone home. It was probably about two days after that. And about two days after my family went home, Skylar was in bed. And I got up because I didn't want to sleep. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to be a person anymore. Because it hurt so bad. It hurt so bad not to have my baby. And so I got out and I sat on the couch. I got on the couch and wrote a letter to Skylar telling him that I couldn't live, that I just wasn't going to do it anymore. And I took one sleeping pill and I held the bottle and I had that letter written out. It was long and it was just that I couldn't do it. I couldn't survive without my baby and I didn't want to be here anymore. And so I wrote it out and I was just sitting there and I took the one pill. And it started to make me sleepy, and I just held all the pills in my hand. But then I couldn't do it. My sister, who's my best friend, and my nieces flashed in my face. And I didn't want to hurt them. I didn't want them to feel what I was feeling. Which, I mean, it wouldn't have been exactly the same, but they would have hurt to know that. I guess my knees, because I only had one. My knees, um... At the time, um, I didn't, I just didn't want either of them, I didn't want them to feel how I was. And I put the pills back in the bottle, and I took the letter and I shredded it, and then I laid on the couch and I went to sleep. And I woke up the next day, and I drove a lot, um, after I lost him, I drove over to my grandparents' farm that was in town, because I felt like I could talk to my grandpa, who had died several years ago, and tell him to watch Joe, watch over my baby for me. And I drove over there and I'd sit in front of the farm a lot. But every time, you guys, every day, anytime I drove in the car, I would pray to God that I would get in a car accident and die. Every day. Anytime I was in the car, no matter what I was doing, every night before I went to bed, I would pray to God that I would never wake up. I um, flew on a plane to visit some friends to try to, you know, get, get out, feel better. And I remember the entire time I was on the plane, I prayed to God that I'd get, that plane would go down, that I would, it would crash and kill me the whole time all summer long. I lost him in April, end of April, and all summer long I prayed to God that I would die, that one way or another. I didn't have the strength to do it. I didn't want to be responsible for it, but that one way or another I would die. 
and it wouldn't happen. <sighs> I was so mad at God because why was he keeping me alive? Why would he keep me alive when I hurt that bad? But he was. And we made it through the summer. Skylar was working out of town, so I spent a lot of time alone. Um, I visited for friends and family when I could, but I also lived 13 hours from people, so it, it made it hard to do that. And I didn't want to work. I didn't want a job because... I couldn't be around people. It still hurt to see babies. It still hurt. So I didn't leave the house. I didn't really eat. Um, I have a really nervous or upset stomach, so I didn't really eat much. I just didn't do anything. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, my nose. <laughs> I'm crying nose now. I just, I honestly don't know what I did for most of that summer. I couldn't watch TV shows because they had babies. I couldn't listen to music. I, I remember that's when I started listening to audiobooks because music played with my feelers and books were a new reality. So I'd pick books that didn't really have babies. I listened to like Harry Potter and Twilight. The first two Twilights. After that I stopped. Um, but I listened to a bunch of audiobooks because they broke the silence. I talked on the phone nonstop to my grandma, bless her heart. She always answered. But every day I prayed to die and it never happened. And then it finally hit me about um, probably it was the end of April. Oh gosh, I'm going to jump backwards though real fast, you guys. I remember back in that July, which is, he was due in July, um, the very beginning of July. They kept changing his due date. So it was either the 2nd or the 4th. Um, but I remember right then I had so many breakdowns too. I cried and I cried. I had so many breakdowns around when he was supposed to be born. It was terrible. But luckily at that time I was with my family. So that it helped a little bit. Like having my sister and my mom there. And my grandparents. But anyways. Okay. Jumping forward because I'm a scramble brain. Um, they. Where was I? I remember a few months later, come probably, probably beginning of September-ish, back when we I started my next semester of college, it finally hit me that I had spent, what, like, almost half a year praying to die every single day, asking God to kill me, and it wasn't happening. It just didn't. And so it finally hit me that maybe I was supposed to live, which sounds really goofy. Okay, it doesn't sound goofy. I was meant to live. And it, it didn't make stuff okay. And I sure as hell hurt really bad. But I decided I was meant to live and that I needed to stop praying to die and that I needed to try to feel better. Skylar was very helpful in trying to get me to go do things. Um, he was back at the apartment by then um, for school and stuff. And so he, you know, he'd get me to go to events with him. And that helped some. But I still didn't really like to do it. And I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. Um, anyways... I decided to live and I decided to try to get better. Getting better was not easy and it took years. I, it took years to be okay after. And I talked about that in previous videos so you guys can see that or watch that one. But it did take a lot for me to be okay. And yeah, I guess I'm going to end here and kind of, I guess my whole point of the story is after somebody loses a baby, suicide is a really big thought because you just want to be with your baby. And I mean, I, I think this is, I, this was a really strong feeling for me. I know one other person it was, I've never really had the balls to ask anybody else, but it was a really big contemplation. I really wanted to die. And so 
when you if you know somebody that went through stillbirth make sure you check in with them a lot make sure because it's really lonely and it's it's a really scary place to be in i am so happy you guys that i didn't um end my life that night when i wanted to i'm so happy that god kept me alive because i have the most brilliant life now i am absolutely in love with the life that I have grown into and this life wouldn't have happened if I wouldn't have lost Jaden. That's sucky and terrible and bullshit to hear but and say but it's true. Nothing I mean everything I would have done would have been different. My whole story would have been different. I have two of the most perfect kids in the whole world that I absolutely love. Um and I went through losses to get them and to have them but I'm so grateful I do. They make my life so complete. My relationship with Skylar is so strong and so amazing. And, you know, a lot of relationships don't survive stillbirths. They don't they don't survive losses because it is tremendously hard, terrible, like hard on both of you. Grieving differently is hard, all of it. And so I'm so thankful that our relationship grew, that our life grew, that everything around us grew and that we talk about Jaden in a way to help others and to spread awareness. So there is that and there's the story of what I wanted to die, but I'm so freaking glad I did it. I am so grateful for my life. I'm grateful to be alive. I cannot wait for the day that I meet. Okay. I can't wait for the day that I meet Jaden, but I want to be like 98 when it happens. I want to watch my other two kids grow and have families of their own and everything. So I'm excited that one day I get to see him again. And I hope it's not for a long time though. Alright, bye you guys.